Hi students, today we'll be discussing clinical enzymology. Now this is an ongoing topic from the series of enzyme related videos. Okay, so if you have watched my enzyme related videos, you are welcome to continue this series. And if you have not watched, I would highly suggest you please go back and watch them. They will help you also. Now clinical enzymology is a detailed topic in itself and it will take a separate video. So here we go. Mind it in your MBBS professional exam or whatever exam you are aiming for clinical enzymology may come as a long question or may come as an individual short note or various justification question may come from it. It is very important for Viva as well as for MCQ. So if you skip clinical enzymology, you might be in trouble. Okay. So uh, at the end of this class, these are the various objectives that you should be able to answer you should be able to describe what are the isoenzymes and their clinical usefulness what are they actually used for all right you should be able to name various markers enzyme markers of various diseases all right you should be able to interpret the values okay various diseases various enzymes go high or may go low so you should be able to interpret the value and also state some uh, roles of enzymes in prognosis and diagnosis as well as monitoring of the disease all right you should also know therapeutic uses of enzyme means some enzymes are also used for treating diseases that is known as therapeutic use all right and lastly you should also know you will know the various enzyme based diagnostic techniques okay and uses of immobilized enzymes so there's a lot to cover uh, definitely we'll be covering in the same video now since you are not watching in a live session you are welcome to pause the slide as well you want and you can make your own notes mind it uh, there are many things in the slide which may be nice to know but i will only focus on the must know area and highlight from the slide so you can note down what you want as feasible and as much time you have before your examination all right so the most important uh, thing in isoenzyme is basically there are phys what how do we define isoenzyme they are physically distinct form of the same enzyme okay they're basically same you will see when we discuss uh, various example just a few slides later they are basically the same enzyme but they are physically different distinct they look different okay in the mi ultra microscopic structure okay so uh, they function similarly but they're located in different places that's the main concept about isoenzyme but in uh, viva what you should know regarding the subunits of the enzyme okay enzyme those enzyme may have multiple type of subunits if the subunits look exactly the same then that enzyme you know enzyme is a protein that and protein is actually a homo multimer and in reality all the subunits are produced by the same gene or single gene if these concepts are not clear to you, it will be very clear when you go through my molecular biology videos or you may stick to the uh, end of the session till later this year. We'll be again discussing all the genes, how proteins are synthesized, how DNA is synthesized. Okay, then it will be very clear. Next, if the enzyme sub enzyme units consist of different type of proteins or different type of subunits, then it's known as a heteromultimer again we'll be discussing it very soon and that heteromultimer means the same enzyme subunits will be produced by different genes each gene is responsible for production of different subunits okay so next isoenzyme may be formed in different ways of course it may be formed in different ways uh, we already read that is it can be produced by more than one gene that is located in different parts of the body those different part of the body or different part of the chromosome for that matter are known as locus okay and the plural is loci so if one gene is present in this part say one gene is present in uh, chromosome number three in the short arm of chromosome three and another gene is present in long arm of chromosome number seven right so these are different locus okay so more than one locus okay in that case they are true isoenzyme means only and only if an enzyme has got two different physically distinct forms whose subunits are produced by a gene located at two different uh, 
places then it is a true isoenzyme this is the definition of isoenzyme from molecular biology perspective uh, till now we knew different enzyme same enzyme at different location performing the same function right we should include another thing that is it is also produced by different gene present at more than one locus okay now uh, for example we have already uh, known various isoenzymes since our seven class seven class eight days of nutrition we already know during carbohydrate digestion amylase right salivary amylase in oral cavity pancreatic amylase in small intestine so on and so forth so those amylases are definitely isoenzyme because they're the same enzyme but they're located in various location we will also see down the line another very important enzyme known as lactate dehydrogenase okay they have got various type of uh, enzyme subunits so we will uh, this is just for your information the isoenzymes what are they and how they behave okay next very important just see the first two lines they are very important the same locus of gene may have different allele now again if the concept of locus and allele is not clear now it will be very clear when you dis when we discuss molecular biology lessons and genetics mind it when you go to give first professional examination viva at that time everything will be covered so you will have no difficulty in understanding what is this but now if you have not covered molecular biology just you have to remember or memorize the definition or the first two lines that i'm telling you the same locus of the gene may have different allele that is alternate forms okay such allylic isoenzymes are also known as allozymes now you should know that these genetic allele may differ based on our genetic makeup okay the same uh, form of enzyme is different in you and is different in me because our genetic makeup is different of course it is present in the same same locus okay for example this enzyme you see glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase this is a very important enzyme of the pathway hmp shunt we'll discuss in carbohydrate metabolism all we have already discussed if you have watched that video so this is present in the x chromosome it is present in the same locus so for me it's the same right but for you the form is different the enzyme is present in the same locus it is performing the same function but it looks different genetic form right so uh, this in fact this is glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme has more hundred more than 400 distinct forms so when we consider the total population various different forms will be found but when considering a single individual of course it's the same okay now another important concept that will be applicable in again molecular biology okay when we uh, see application of genetics it is due to a sing variation in single gene locus okay when these isoenzymes so these isoenzymes can be studied so what happens when there is a difference when there is a variation in the uh, locus of the allele i know it may be confusing right now but please hear me out when isoenzymes due to variation at single locus occur with appreciable frequency it is said to be polymorphism so again this term will not be asked in your clinical enzymology lessons or clinical enzymology exam if your syllabus is distinctly enzymology but if your syllabus consists of everything you should know that a variation in a single locus is known as polymorphism it may be uh, there are those things in short form there may be single nucleotide or multiple nucleotide single nucleotide known as snp okay you can uh, bunk it right now so this is a nice to know area it's not a must know area all right so you see molecular heterogeneity of isoenzyme may be produced after the protein is synthesized that is post translational modification again protein synthesis a matter of genetics so everything it's very much related so this uh, slide is actually uh, one of the nice to know area except this one allozyme this is a could know area right so when the post translational modification that is after translation has happened if there is any modification in the protein uh, structure or function they produce different type of enzyme forms that is known as isoforms okay and this is very important the different type of isoforms may be present in the same individual okay so this slide may have been a bit difficult for you to understand but the next slide is very important it will come as a long question or it may be given as a one liner basically the question is there are different forms of enzyme 
isoenzyme in our body how can you identify the various different isoenzyme because it is the same enzyme doing the same function so we need to have some methodology by which we can differentiate these various forms if you are given with only one option to choose or examiner wants only one answer you can answer electrophoresis okay their electrophoretic mobility that is how they move in different electrical charge field is different so isoenzymes have different mobility so electrophoresis can easily separate all the isoenzymes if examiner asks you okay anything what next then you can say heat stability so these two are most important okay so one enzyme may be easily destroyed by heat that is known as heat labile l a b i l e okay labile and some form of isoenzyme may be very much uh, stable to heat that is known as heat stable okay so for example one of the isoenzymes may be easily denatured by heat that is bone alkaline phosphatase fine and placental alkaline phosphatase alkaline phosphatase is also produced from placenta p l a c e n t a placenta is a connection between the mother and the child it is formed in the uterus during um, baby <laughs> i mean delivery you know all right you already know that what placenta is so placenta already also produces alkaline phosphatase and uh, that placenta alkaline phosphatase is very much heat stable right so other factors you don't need to know in detail you can just remember the name or you may choose to forget also that is different isoenzymes can have different inhibitors they vary in their affinity for substrate that is km value you should know km value by now because uh, you have already gone through enzymology lessons right various isoenzymes can have various cofactor the location of various isoenzymes are different as well as isoenzymes can have specific different antibodies for which they are uh, i mean they can be inhibited by those antibodies and they can attach to those antibodies right but the first two are must know electrophoresis and heat stability okay we move on to various uh, specific example of isoenzyme the first is lactate dehydrogenase ldh one of very important uh, isoenzyme example for undergraduate students okay ldh has got different uh, is a tetramer it has got four subunits okay and the subunits are of two types h type or m type polypeptide chain that is chain of amino acid right so either h or m the name h has been derived from heart and m from muscle right so five combinations are possible all h okay homo multimer right 3h and 1m1 2h and 2m 1h and 3m these are all hetero multimers and m4 that is all the subunits are m variety again this is a homo multimer okay and all this five forms are seen in everyone in you me my to all other students my parents everybody right so if we do a electrophoresis of these uh, of a mixture of ldh right you can see all these different isoforms have moved to different lengths we'll be again discussing electrophoresis in detail or i have already made a video you can look into that how this electrophoresis is done how we can interpret what are these curves so basically if we do electrophoresis we can separate all the isoenzymes now what's important for us to know that is what are the location of these uh, isoenzymes and how their electrophoretic mobility is at least you should know two for or three for that matter h4 is very important because it is the fastest it moves the most distance right m4 is the slowest right h is present in heart muscle definitely the name h it is very easy to remember and m4 muscle it is present in skeletal muscle also another variety h3 m1 we can choose to remember it is present in red blood cell as well as in brain and generally it is the maximum amount or maximum fraction of ldh that is present in blood this has got some importance okay what's the importance that is normally h3 m1 is present mostly and h4 is not the i mean most abundant fraction right however if 
there is a myocardial infarction or that we call heart attack in a non medical language acute myocardial infarction when there is a destruction of cardiac tissue this value of h4 will increase than h3m1 and that is known as flipped pattern normally this is high this is not second high and when acute myocardial infarction occur this becomes highest and this becomes second highest so this is what it's written okay so h4 is form is normally present in heart and h3m1 concentration is blood is greater than h4 but this pattern is reversed in myocardial infarction it is known as flip pattern also we have already discussed that since h3m1 is present in a present in rbc if there is hemolysis that is any condition for example hereditary spherocytosis or blood transfusion mismatch blood transfusion all those things anything leading to hemolysis or any primaquin injection you will know what are the cause of hemolysis later okay so hemolysis means rbcs will lyse they will break and all the enzymes will come out and they will give a false positive high result for ldh if you are trying to determine the value of ldh for some other diseases if we have hemolysis we should always take care while drawing blood sample hemolysis does not happen should not happen but if hemolysis happens we should reject that sample and we should take a fresh sample of blood this is important regarding clinical for clinical importance so this is the reason uh, ldh is increased in many condition you can see total ldh is present uh, is present everywhere it is present in liver it is present in white blood cell red blood cell muscle so total if we look at the total amount of ldh if it is increased we simply cannot say just by looking at the total ldh value whether it is present in any of the five area so unless we are looking at the sub unit that is h4 sub unit specific h4 sub unit activity the total ldh we cannot use it as a cardiac marker especially nowadays because more important and specific cardiac markers have appeared right so we next we come again let me tell you uh, you are free to pause the slides or pause the video and take your own notes and uh, maintain your own pace but if you are in a hurry you should continue right so in clinical enzymology there is a very important term known as non functional enzyme now what is non functional enzyme see we have read many enzymes because we have read about glycolysis krebs cycle since our school days right so for example the enzyme hexokinase glucokinase uh, phosphofructokinase pyruvate kinase for example right or alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase citrate synthase any enzyme these are highly functional because they are acting in metabolic pathways right and they are actively secreted in plasma so if you take a sample of blood and if you measure these enzyme they will be in a very high amount right because they are always acting at tissue level however there are few enzymes they are not active in plasma that is not active in extracellular environment of course they are present inside the cells you get my point they are present inside the cells but they are not present in plasma plasma is extracellular outside the cell so if we look at their value in plasma their value will be very low negligible right because they have no function in plasma but for some reason if that specific cell is destroyed it may be trauma it may be infection it may be uh, loss of blood supply anything necrosis the normal wear and tear those uh, cells will burst and their enzymes will come out in plasma and then the level of these non functional enzyme will suddenly go up and that will indicate that specific cell is at a problem and we can thus diagnose these uh, specific diseases with the help of various enzymes so if we uh, assay or if we measure the amount of this plasma non functional enzyme normally they should be low or negligible there are multiple enzyme one enzyme is secreted from pancreas one is secreted from heart one is secreted from liver they are non functional in nature in plasma but if their value goes high they will indicate that okay heart is at a problem if the pancreas specific enzyme is increased in plasma we will say wow pancreas may be at fault right so uh, now this 
actually this phenomena by which we can uh, measure something and we can then extrapolate our theory of knowledge our knowledge to diagnose a disease this is known as a biomarker right so where here we are using enzyme as a biomarker so what is actually biomarker biomarker is defined as a naturally occurring molecule or gene or characteristic by which a particular pathological process can be identified mind it biomarker is a big term enzyme is one of the subclass of biomarker that is clinical enzymes so a biomarker can be anything any protein any gene or any peptide anything any molecule which is specific to an organ and whose activity or raised activity can indicate some disease of that organ okay this is uh, what you should know another definition of biomarker that is present in the textbook of vasudevan <laughs> right is that a biomarker is a substance used as an indicator to presence of a material of biological origin or physiological condition or process specifically a diagnostic indicator to a medical condition basically the same thing i would suggest you write this in your own language any biomarker is a naturally occurring molecule present in the body whose value or whose measurement will give us an idea about disease of a specific organ this is the definition of biomarker now most important biomarker are the cardiac biomarkers mind it cardiac biomarkers can be a class in itself especially in the practical sessions uh, and will be discussed in a separate video but for now you should know that when do we need cardiac markers definitely when there is a cardiac diseases right cardiac disease means myocardial infarction or heart failure in those cases we need because we cannot just directly open up the body and look at the heart like this wow heart is not functioning we cannot do that right so there are physiological biomarkers that is these cardiac troponins cardiac enzyme right creatine kinase isoenzyme bnp these are biological markers apart from that there are other functional signs of cardiac disorder for example electrophysiological sign is ecg functional sign is echocardiography but those are not measured okay we see the patterns what we can measure are the biomarkers and these are cardiac troponins and ck isoenzyme that is creatine kinase here we are only focusing on the creatine kinase isoenzyme because cardiac troponins are not enzymes okay these are troponins that help in muscle contraction you already have read in physiology trop actin myosin troponin tropomyosin so that's it however we need to know few details about uh, creatine kinase that is creatine kinase that ck has three isoforms one is bb that is present in brain one is mb that is present in heart or myocardium and one is mm that is present in skeletal muscle and for cardiac diseases creatine in kinase mb subfraction is important okay this is what you should know now next what are the enzymes that can indicate liver dysfunction so when we uh, do our routine blood checkup when physician prescribes us lft that is liver function test these are the various enzymes that are generally tested if not all at least these three enzymes will of course be tested that is alanine amino transferase aspartate amino transferase and alkaline phosphatase they indicate liver function and if the the values are raised they will definitely indicate some form of liver disorder alanine transaminase is also known as sgpt serum glutamate pyruvate transaminase and ast is also known as sgot serum glutamate oxaloacetate transaminase don't get confused by these names when we'll be discussing protein metabolism and we'll be studying transamination in detail it will be very easy for you to remember and alkaline phosphatase is an enzyme that is also raised in obstructive liver disorder in uh, stone common bile duct etc okay and you should know that sgot this enzyme is also present in heart okay so we are now studying about alanine transaminase out of so many things we just need to one know one value that is approximately this value see 10 to 35 you can remember 10 to 35 as in general okay for males and females separately you don't need to know right so if the value is more than double 
that is if the value is 45 it's fine if the value is more than 70 then we can suspect there is some problem right so for example very high values 300 to 1000 may be seen in acute hepatitis so liver problem always and always you remember a l t this l stands for liver disorder right so a l t is problem mind it both a l t and a s t can be raised okay but the dictum is if a l t is more than a s t it generally indicate liver disorder both are high but a l t is higher the raise in alanine transaminase if it is much higher compared to the rise of aspartate transaminase then we suspect there is a liver disorder but if it is the other way around if both are raised and a s t is more than a l t then we suspect there might be some heart disorder okay of course we just don't look at the enzyme values we look at other factors we look at bilirubin and in case of heart we also look at other enzymes so the diagnosis will be very clear but this is a dictum by which we can roughly say just if these two values are only given to us we can say oh if lt is more than ast maybe it's a case of liver disorder okay uh, so we have already discussed uh, what's uh, all you need to know about ast the range is a bit lower okay we know that AST can be also high in liver disorder but specifically if excess it is denoting heart disorder but it is not used nowadays mainly cardiac troponins are used therefore you can see AST was used as a marker in myocardial ischemia in older days olden days there is nothing called the just ignore this term it is a spelling mistake <laughs> in uh, history okay it's a historical right the troponins have replaced ast as a diagnostic marker in ischemic heart injury right and we already said ast also marker of hepatic injury fine alkaline phosphatase very important you need to know alkaline phosphatase uh, are present in bone it's present in placenta it is present in liver but in general if alkaline phosphatase is very high along with bilirubin so bilirubin is high that is jaundice is present along with that alkaline phosphatase is very high we should uh, always uh, presume that there is an obstruction in common bile duct and this is known as obstructive jaundice so mainly it is known as cholestasis the bile cannot move inside the biliary canaliculi liver everything will be taught in anatomy in detail okay so remember alkaline phosphatase it indicates liver disease if bilirubin is high if not if bilirubin is completely normal then we look for other problems that is it may be from the bones okay so uh, here it goes you need to know three enzymes about liver disorder alt ast and al P, okay. See the this slide uh, tells whatever we already discussed. So you don't need to uh, write down in detail. So any kind of obstruction alkaline phosphatase level will go extremely high. And if liver is perfectly normal, then we can suspect some bone disorder or bone cancer or bone tumor okay then also alkaline phosphatase will go very 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 high but first in general depending on the other symptoms we should suspect a liver disorder it depends on the problem card if is suffering the child uh, the patient is suffering from bone pain there's a growth in bone solid tumor in the leg and alkaline phosphatase is high definitely we won't think about liver right but there's a pain abdomen yellowish discoloration that is jaundice bilirubin is high alkaline phosphatase is high then we should say it's a case of obstructive jaundice it all depends and we will be discussing all clinical features all clinical problem cards later in our separate video session so it will be very easier for you to uh, diagnose right now regarding various isoenzymes of alkaline phosphatase trust me you don't need to know all in detail but if you're answering very well okay it's a nice to know area if you're answering very well then there is a heat stable variety of alkaline phosphatase it is of placental origin right that is inhibited by phenylalanine this is a nice to know area please mind it however we are not interested in this heat stable version of alkaline phosphatase what you are interested is another similar enzyme that resembles placental alkaline phosphatase is present in lung carcinoma right 
normally alkaline phosphatase is not produced in lung it is produced in bone liver placenta all these things right but in case of lung carcinoma that to in 15% cases of lung carcinoma that is if there are 100 cases of lung cancer only 15 of them may have one enzyme that is very similar to this placental isoenzyme right that is known as Reagan isoenzyme or carcino placental isoenzyme this is a nice to know area and if you answer Reagan isoenzyme exam will be very pleased provided you have answered all other question about clinical enzymology next we move to gamma glutamyl transpeptidase or ggt at your level you just need to know it is only increased in alcoholism patient with excess alcoholism or chronic alcoholism alcohol abuse the level of ggt will increase so you know alcohol usually evaporates and after 72 hours you may not get any smell from mouth so if you are to uh, diagnose a person who may be lying maybe uh, you become a parent and you need to check your kids whether they have been back from a long summer camp whether they have been drinking all along you just go and check their ggt sample and you will see ggt level is very high and then you can deal them in your own way so be very careful you cannot lie to your parents okay there's nothing bad about uh, alcohol consumption personally i don't consume but um, if you stay in your limits it's not bad it's actually bad it's actually very bad it uh, does all the bad things to you but if you stay in your limit it will not make you a bad person okay <laughs> anyway next is prostate specific antigen we don't need to know PSA at all now we will be discussing separately in a tumor marker uh, or cancer lesson we will see that it is increased in prostate cancer now simply ignore PSA in case of acid phosphatase again this is a marker this is an enzyme of course is a phosphatase enzyme and again we will be discussing it in detail in our tumor marker lesson and it is again a marker of prostate cancer tumor marker means any biological marker that can detect any tumors okay right uh, previously we were discussing acute myocardial infarction or bone disorder or jaundice those are not tumors okay and what is tumor you will read in pathology the next important enzyme is glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase we will skip it for now because glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase a video has been already made and you frankly don't need g6pd or glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase until you cover carbohydrate metabolism okay there we'll be discussing in high detail much detail how it leads to hemolytic anemia what is the advantage females suffer genetic advantage because it's an x-linked disorders all those things okay next comes amylase at your level at undergraduate level being a first year student all you need to know is these two enzyme amylase and lipase both are raised in acute pancreatitis that is a disorder of pancreas amylase and lipase level will go up how much about more than thousand times you don't need to know the normal value just say a very 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 high level of amylase and lipase happens in acute pancreatitis you have read about this enzyme enolase right in the last step of glycolysis right uh, so glycolysis this glycolytic enzyme is actually a very specific marker tumor marker uh, that is in case of neurology it is known as neuron specific enolase again we will be reading it in our tumor marker lesson okay neuron in case of pheochromocytoma forget it now very important ceruloplasmin it is related to copper metabolism we will be reading ceruloplasmin in detail when we are discussing about copper metabolism in mineral metabolism okay skip it for now if you are studying from your textbook simply skip it so this uh, slide is probably the most important it summarizes what we have discussed till now in case of hepatic diseases you need to know these three enzymes mainly alanine transaminase aspartate transaminase and alkaline phosphatase mind it alkaline phosphatase is uh, produced I mean raised in obstruction liver disease and these two are in parenchymal where the liver tissue is disorder in disorder that is known as parenchymal disease viral hepatitis hepatitis A B C D E F G all those there are multiple hepatitis virus from A to G you see there are multiple hepatitis virus right and what they do they basically destroy the liver tissue and these are known as parenchymal disorder and I already told you GGT is increased in 
alcoholic liver disorder in case of myocardial infarction cardiac troponin you don't need to know right now but everywhere you read you will come across this name cardiac troponin because they have actually replaced all the cardiac markers and the enzyme cardiac markers right so you should know cardiac troponin but you should know not as an enzyme but they are uh, actually very important very early marker of cardiac disorder but in case of cardiac isoenzyme ckmb is very specific and in case of muscle disorder ckmm we have already read about uh, this isoenzyme when we were discussing the ckmb that is increased in muscle disorder apart from that you don't need to know anything else in clinical enzymology from disease perspective okay in addition to that we have also discussed that is alkaline phosphatase is very much increased in bone disorder we will be discussing in calcium and phosphate metabolism but we already know and also in vitamin d that rickets okay it's a very important bone disorder that is nutritional bone disorder and it is very much treatable rickets can be treated using vitamin d okay so those disorder rickets and pages disease alkaline phosphatase goes up very high we have gone through but i have told you to omit or not study for now prostate specific antigen and acid phosphatase because we'll be discussing them in tumor marker session as well as neuron specific enolase nse glycolytic enzyme we have discussed but will not be giving much importance now and lastly pancreatic disease that is acute pancreatitis very high very very high amount of my myelase and lipase will be there in the serum right now lastly what these are all diagnostic enzyme means we are diagnosing diseases by uh, <coughs> measuring these enzymes now how we can use enzyme as a therapeutic agent how you can treat some diseases as enzyme very important that is streptokinase and urokinase from uh, various sources that is streptokinase is uh, found from streptococcus and urokinase is actually isolated from the urine okay these enzymes are very good in clot lysis that is if a clot is formed it can dissolve the clot where a clot is formed and we can dissolve it in our body that is in myocardial infarction mind it streptokinase is a life saving drug or life saving injection if streptokinase is administered in a critical period after heart attack or myocardial infarction if we can promptly take the patient to the icu or ward in hospital if streptokinase is infusion is started it can save life if it is delayed there will be permanent damage of the heart okay so it is so much important apart from that pepsin and trypsin are given to patient with defective digestion we have already read various digestive tablets right and asparaginase is used as an anti cancer drug so these are examples of how enzymes can be used as therapeutic agents so this will be all if you are a first year student but if you are a student who has completed mbbs and if you are studying for the mcq that is in a pg level to crack neat or next exam then you need to remember this total list as a first year student i won't even tell you what to remember what not to you are free to choose any one and i will definitely suggest you to remember only streptokinase to treat acute myocardial infarction that's it nothing more but if you are a pg student or if you're not pg student you are aspiring pg examination you need to know the therapeutic use of enzyme the total list you can pause the video note it now take a screenshot take a photo whatever as well as you need to know all the total list for diagnostic disorders that is ureas for urea uricase for uric acid glucose oxidase very important this glucose oxidase peroxidase the or god pod method okay you might have already done it in your practical exam if you are seeing enzymology by now because this is the first thing that is taught okay glucose estimation quantitative estimation of glucose apart from that all these are enzymes that we apply in some or the other form for testing diagnostic purpose mind it these are not biomarkers biomarker is something that we are measuring in the body these we are measuring in vitro that is we are using these enzymes in our test tubes to measure some abnormal constituents in our body okay all these are routine examination urea uric acid glucose cholesterol triglyceride even in polymerase chain reaction pcr we will read we are using tac polymerase right thermos aquaticus because that is the heat uh, resistant polymerase dna polymerase we will be discussing in much detail about pcr elisa southern blot rflp everything i have already got videos that have covered these topics and that's it for 
today now the class has ended but why do i say to be continued because the there are many more lessons in enzymology you can watch those videos and the learning never stops and you can actually continue to learn biochemistry from many other videos in my channel if you want to join the facebook group the link to that is in the description there are many students from other colleges and we do have many more interactive discussion regarding any topic you can feel free to post in the comment section and if you have watched this video till now please type the code word marker yes i have horrible handwriting please type the word marker if i see marker i will know that if you have watched this video till now anyways thanks a lot for watching i will see you soon with another video till then bye and take care